Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, pretty compact MLB slate. Um, I'm going solo today, so it's probably going to go a little bit faster. And it is, it seems to be kind of a straightforward slate, but uh, you never know. So we will go through, hmm, how do you want to do this? Let's, uh, let's go through game by game, and uh, we'll do it that way. Sometimes I do it kind of a top-down approach, but... Let's, let's do it game by game. So White Sox and Baltimore. So right off the bat, we have um, we have a situation. So it, it is, look, it is going to be a day of, Sh of Shane McClanahan uh, in the Tampa game, being the top guy. And it's going to be very, very difficult to fade that. So it is going to be a question, uh, really, of where your SP2 is. And I think that Luis Giolito is a very, very strong, uh, low-owned uh, SP2. I mean, let's face it. He really hasn't gotten anybody out since the Eisenhower administration. Um, but, however, I mean, he does still have strikeout upside. Like, he, he, you know, he's given up runs and hits and stuff, but he still puts up seven strikeouts from time to time. And I don't know. I, I'm just a little stubborn with him, and I still think that he's got a ceiling performance in there somewhere. And this is like a perfect opportunity to try it because he's been 6,800, 7,500, 7,800, busted his chalk every once, every time. And now they're actually moving him up in price to 8,400 against kind of a hot team. So I don't think he's going to get owned. Um, so for me, I think this is a pretty strong, um, a pretty strong uh, GPP play on a slate where you really need to differentiate in some way, especially at the pitching position. So I, I actually really do like this spot a lot. Um I don't, I don't like the spot a lot. I just like it as a GPP play. Um, I don't have any interest in Spencer Watkins. With the stacks, I don't really, I don't have either of these teams rated at the top. I mean, I got, look, first of all, for all the reasons that I like Giolito, I mean, Baltimore is always, in, I mean, listen, whoever Giolito is playing is always in play because he does give up home runs. So I guess Baltimore is in play, but, not from, certainly not from a projection perspective. I think the White Sox are somewhat interesting. Um, they're definitely second or third tier. Um, and actually, to be honest, their ownership, you don't get too much of a break on it. So I guess I'll probably take a pass on the White Sox as well. Um, the only thing I would say about the White Sox is you do have a little bit of correlation there. Um, if you want to get the Giolito win, you know, partially uh, you kind of like the White Sox to score a little bit. So, um, I guess they're okay. Uh, White Sox, I have kind of second, third tier. Baltimore, I don't have at all. And I think Giolito, I think, is kind of a borderline elite <laughs> uh, GPP player. Um, okay, so next game, Philadelphia against Cincinnati. Let's talk about the pitching for a second. So you have Christopher Sanchez, who is going to rate to be a very strong point, uh, point per dollar play because he's 5,500. I, I really don't have any interest in this. Um, he just, he's just not a strikeout guy, you know, and, and I know that's being greedy. I mean, how much do you want for 5,500, but he didn't strike anybody on the minors. He's just some dude, you know, uh, if anything, if anything, I probably would want to play Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, if you want to know the truth. And that's where I probably get more, more of my exposure would be from um would be from Cincinnati. I mean he doesn't this guy literally has no strikeouts. Um I that would be my my thoughts. Um speaking of which when it came to stacks um I do have Philly rated as clearly one of those uh I don't even see second tier they're like they're pretty close to the first tier. I have a tier of four top ones and then a drop to where Chicago the White Sox were next. I think Philly's right up there. They're also going to be owned um, but they're not going to be owned as much as, say, Toronto, who's going to be the highest owned. So I think Philadelphia is a really, really strong uh, strong stack uh, uh, possibility here. As I mentioned, uh, I, I do like Cincinnati. I mean, they're always cheap. They're always going to look like good value. And God forbid the Sanchez dude gets ownership. Um, this sounds good to me. I'll take Cincinnati against that. So I'm more interested in the hitting in this game than anything else. Okay, moving on to uh, Tampa against L.A. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Shane McClanahan is clearly, at least for me, um, the best play on the slate, um, best pitcher on the slate for sure. Um, 
as I, as I as I check my stats again, I see these White Sox showing up again. Yeah, so I, I would not dismiss these White Sox that I mentioned earlier. I, I still think the White Sox and Phillies are very strong. Right? Well, we'll get back to that. Um, Mike Mayers. Uh, no, I, I, no, I'm I'm just not doing it. I mean, again, he's going to be a. I mean, he had four strikeouts, five strikeouts, five innings. I guess it's not the worst play in the world, but I, I, I'm just not doing that. Uh, and I'm not getting to either the hitting in this this game either, though. For me, I'm, I'm not going to play Tampa coming off of the 12 run game. I'm uh, just not doing that. It's not my style. So for me, it's just going to be McClanahan or nothing, and probably that means McClanahan. Okay, I alluded to this before. Uh, Toronto against Boston. Um, Toronto is going to show up as the top overall stack on the slate. Um, However, they are going to show up also as the highest owned, and the amount that they exceed the next highest stack is not that great, uh, if anything. So I would probably end up giving these guys a fit, giving giving these guys a fade in GPPs. Um, so Toronto is going to rate well, but I would go elsewhere uh, for uh, some pretty you know pretty strong pivots. I already mentioned Philly and the White Sox, which are good enough, but we got some others coming up as well. Uh, pitching wise, uh, Barrios, I don't think this is the right spot. Uh, we had a nice ceiling out of him as, as value, I think in his last, uh, outing, um, and at, at Yankees of all things. Um, but I just don't think this is the right opportunity. Uh, I'll probably pass on that. Let's just, let me, before I dismiss that, let me, let me, let me just take a look. Cause again, I am looking for, for decent SP2s. No, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. I even have better. Better SP2s. Man, now I come up with this Mike Myers again. The Mike Mayers and the Sanchez, I think they're they're both identical. I just don't think you want to play either of them. Um, I mean, look, if you want to play Toronto, you want to play both these guys together, that's one thing. But I just, I'd just i rather play McClanahan with other pitchers that we're going to get to, starting with Giolito, by the way. Um, and as far as Boston goes, really not getting to them. Uh, they're not really showing up at all. St. Louis, Chicago. Uh, I do have some interest in Mike Mikolas as an SP2. We're going to have to watch for the wind, um, make sure it's not blowing out. But if if not, uh, I definitely think he's in play as as he's a totally different type of play than Giolito. He's a lot more consistent and doesn't strike out as many and doesn't give up a zillion runs. Um, so he's definitely in play. Um, again, these SP2s, there's a lot of ways you can go, and I think he's one of them. Uh, I don't know who this Farrell guy is. I'm not playing him. The as far as the stacks go, yeah, I guess, you know what? I have St. Louis. Ugh, I'm looking at Boston again. You know, hold off on, on, on me saying no to Boston, by the way. Just hold off on that for a minute. I do think that they're sort of in play, as is St. Louis. Uh, these, these, are kind of, these are kind of pivots off of Toronto. Um, so St. Louis, I think, is very fair. Um, Goldschmidt, Arenado, Newt Bar, Gorman, I like, Dijon. I think they're very much in play. So I do like St. Louis. I like Mikolas. I like playing them together. And again, before I dismiss that Toronto side of the Boston game, uh, that Boston side, I would go to I would go to them. You could pretty you would game stack this game if you get the umpire you want and the wind starts to blow out or something like that, which we'll be able to look at later. But back to St. Louis, Chicago. I do like Mikolas and I do like St. Louis. No interest in the Chicago hit. All right. Uh Minnesota, Houston. Valdez against Bundy. So Valdez is a very strong, you know, pitcher in general. He is, you know, always uh, going to be probably a big favorite for the win. It's not exactly uh, the greatest ceiling guy though. So he's not really showing up for me as a, a good DFS play today. And I'm out on Dylan Bundy. Um, every once in a while he'll flash something, but you know, at Houston, I'm, I'm just not interested in I mean, what I am interested in is is Houston, right? Um, Houston, I think, is a very, very strong option today. Um, let's pull this up. Uh, are they on par with 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 these other teams I mentioned? Um, well, maybe not. Let me just see something. Yeah, they are. I mean, I have them right in that top four. You know, so I have Philly. Um, I talked about Toronto, but we're not playing them. 
we talked about, and we'll talk about one other team in a minute, but I think Houston's very much in play. And then the usual suspects, Tucker, Alvarez, Altuve, Bregman, Guriel, you know, I think they're all in play here against Bundy. So for me, this game, once again, just just the Houston hitting, and I'm probably not going to play about this. All right, so uh, Arizona against Kansas City. You have two kind of hot pitchers here in Brady Singer and Zach Gallen. And for whatever reason, I'm not really getting to the Brady Singer side of this uh, quite yet. I don't think his projections have caught up yet. And this could be a mistake. You're, used, you're probably supposed to stay ahead of the of the back end of the projections. Um, was that What that means is that projections kind of factor in, you know, the past a little bit. And if the past is gone, you don't want to, you know what I mean? Like if you guys become a completely different pitcher, then he's going to be under projected for a while. It's possible that's the case with him, um, but I'm not exactly convinced yet. So uh, I'm not going to play him at 9,200. But for the more aggressive player that's willing to make that leap and say he's completely a different pitcher, which is possible, he's young. Um, I don't think it's the worst play in the world. Uh, Gallon is 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 the play here. I mean, Kansas City can't hit anybody. It's, Gallon's been pretty hot. So uh, I, I like that. He's probably the, probably the, the chalky SP2. Uh, along with McClanahan. Uh, if you want to get funny, you could play Gallon with Giolito and get different that way and just hope McClanahan just – look, McClanahan hasn't had incredible games recently. It's just the matchup is just so strong here. Um, so I, I do like uh, Gallon, not as much Singer. And let me take a look and see if these guys show up. Kansas City is always going to show up as a good play just because they're so damn cheap, but they just haven't done anything. I'm probably going to end up with some of them just because, but uh, especially if Gallon ends up popular, maybe you could try it, but it's a tough matchup for Kansas City right now. They really are not hitting the ball pretty well, very well. And then the last game you have Haney versus Hauser, um, Dodgers against Milwaukee. And I think in another universe, I might take a shot at Haney here. I just don't know what the Dodgers have planned for him. You know, are they going to let him roll, where he can get all these, uh, all these, all these, all these pitches in? I mean, if so, he's going to go back to the Andrew Haney that we all used to play as chalk last year. You know what I mean? Uh, but he hasn't gotten through five innings yet. You know, I'm just willing to wait until that happens. So for me, I'm passing. No interest in Hauser, but I certainly have interest in the Dodgers. I think they're going to tee off on this dude. I, mean, I really think that this is. I think the Dodgers are the elite play of the day. Um, I, I, you know, I don't need to play Toronto when I can play freaking the Dodgers against the righty. Not, not to mention a righty who hasn't pitched in a while. Not to mention a righty who was responsible for me taking down one of the big ones a few, you know, a couple of months, a month or two ago. Adrian Hauser is my hero. Couldn't, couldn't get out of the third inning against the Reds. So I'll be more than happy to take the Dodgers lefties against them. Let's go. Um, so just kind of to summarize. Um, from a pitching perspective, uh, McClanahan certainly rates to be the best play, but do not dismiss um, uh, Giolito. I do think he's a very strong GPP play. If you don't have it in you to do that, then there's Gallon. Um, who else did I say? Mikolas. I think those are the top plays. And as far as hitting goes, uh, yeah, Toronto's going to project well, but I'd rather go for less chalky options. And it's going to be Chicago. It's going to be Phillies, Houston. Um, Phillies, Houston, Chicago White Sox, maybe a little St. Louis or Boston, but the real—I think the Dodgers are the are the, are the main play. Uh, so Dodgers, Houston, Philly, White Sox, sound fair? Dodgers, Philly, Houston, Dodgers, 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 Dodgers. I guess the Dodgers. I guess in summary, play the Dodgers. Um, and that'll do it. Uh, I should be around at six to do some live uh, updating, and that'll uh, tide you over until then. Good luck, everybody.